co-host Robin and Heather, as you guys know. Uh, they we're coming to you early in the morning from the other side of the country, uh, live here in Utah. And so I uh, just want to make a couple announcements before we uh, get started. Uh, in fact, you can go ahead and get your Bible and we're going to be in Malachi uh, chapter 3. Uh, just look Old Testament, last book in the Old Testament. That's where we're going to be. Uh, chapter 3. Uh, first thing is, next week you guys will be moving, uh, meeting, not moving, uh, um, <laughs> we'll be meeting back in person uh, at the 1004 Ivy Lane uh, Church. Um, and we're going to be starting a series uh, on the first book, uh, the first few chapters of Revelation. Uh, and so if, man, you, you guys have questions about uh, some end time stuff, uh, we won't answer them uh, because we'll just be going through the first few chapters of Revelation, really just kind of where Jesus is addressing his church. And I think it's, it's pretty applicable of the church today, also uh, some thousands of years later. Um, Revelation, what could go wrong, right? Um, anyway, so if you have a Bible, Malachi uh, chapter 3 in the Old Testament. Um, Malachi is one of those prophets. If, you, if you've been around refuge for a while, you know I love some some of those screaming prophets uh, in the Old Testament. Some of those guys are some of my favorites. Um, and I figured, you know, it's the end of 2020. You know, we, we could probably use a screaming prophet. Uh, actually, it's the beginning of 2021, so Happy New Year to you. Uh, anyway, Malachi chapter 3. Uh, and this is live, so something can go wrong. I don't know. We'll, we'll just go with it, all right? We're going to pick it up in verse 1, and it says, Hear the word of the Lord this morning. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can, I love this little wrench he kind of throws in there. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he does appear? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and uh, refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then... The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift witness among against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts, for I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. Let's pray over the reading of God's word this morning. God, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you, God, that in it we find life. And I thank you, Lord, that um, you are like the refiner's fire and you put us through the fire. I pray, God, that your word would just refine us this morning. And I pray, God, for those who don't know you, would come to know you uh, through your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. So let me give you just a couple more notes. Again, I'm live right now and I'm in someone's house. So if there are children running around or down below me, we're preparing for church service. So if you hear music in the background, it's okay. Uh, we're getting ready to go uh, to do church here in just a couple of hours. So got to say that real quick. Can I just say like this scripture, a couple points about this scripture just reminds me of like uh, refined. Uh, when I, when I was reading through this, uh, this week, I was like, oh, 2020, right? The year of refinement. Okay. And, and like, maybe you started the new year of uh, 2020 and you were thinking like, Oh man, new year, new me. And maybe you're saying that now. And I would just caution you to be careful because maybe that's not the year you're going to have. Because what we just experienced in 2020, maybe this is you, maybe it's not you. I'm, I'm just talking about like some, my own experiences and, and from people I know who've experienced a lot of things in 2020. You can identify with this because you know 2020 was like that year of refinement for you. 
you felt like you were put right in the fire. Like if I could describe 2020 to you, it was a year of refinement. It was a year of refinement, not just for you personally, but it was, in my opinion, a year of refinement for God's church, the Church of America, the Universal Church. It was the year of refinement. And thank God it was because that's a good, good thing. At least 12 times in the Bible, God is referenced. Uh, God is referred to as the refining fire. And our, our relationship with God is one with him. It is like a refine, a refinement. We see this initiating love of God where the day of the Lord is approaching. But then he says, but who can stand it? Our God is a God who refines us. Like when I think of love, I don't think of refinement. But this is an initiating love that God gives them to his people that he's going to refinement, refine them. Now, the, the children of Israel, just to give you a little context, because you know I'm all about some context in the scripture. They're looking for a savior. They've been oppressed. They've been put into exile. They've come out of exile. They've rebuilt the temple. They're longing. They're yearning. They've been listening and hearing all these prophets and and, and been reading about all these promises that the day of the Lord is coming, that the Messiah is coming. And then verse just kind of, verse two just takes them just a menacing turn. But who could endure this promise that's coming? The object of your passion is on its way. Like this thing you've been longing for and been waiting for, it's here, it's, it's, it's almost at the door. But who, but who can stand it? The people of God in, in this period of time in the history when the book of Malachi is written, they've been freed from the Babylonian captivity. Jerusalem has been reestablished. The temple's been rebuilt. The sacrifices to God have resumed, but there's a problem. The people of God have grown complacent within their hearts and they've grown cold towards the Lord I think you find this rhythm um, in the Old Testament with the people of God. And really, you find this rhythm with everybody, with, with the relationship with God. When things are going bad, what do you do? You call out to the Lord. God, save me. God, come help me, Lord. But when, when you're in a good season, I, I don't know about you. I, I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about me. When I'm in a good season, what happens in my heart is I have a tendency to grow complacent to the Lord and really just kind of grow cold to him. Because what? Why do I need him when things are going well? This is exactly what's happening. Malachi is rebuking the children of God because now things have been going along pretty well for them. But complacency has become an idol within their heart. It reminds me of Zephaniah when Zephaniah just rips the people. I mean, like he just goes like screaming prophet on them. He's like, you've grown complacent. Like you've torn down the idols up in the mountains, but you still have idols within your heart. And that idol is complacency towards the Lord. And this may not sound like an encouraging message, but promise, I promise you this is an encouraging message because this is the love of God towards his people. That even though they're growing complacent within their hearts, what's God doing? He's initiating his love towards them and refining them because he sees what, el what everyone else don't see. He sees what's in his people. If I can give you a couple points this morning, my first thing that I would tell you is that if you've been through a year of refinement or if you're stepping into more refining, let me tell you something. That's good. You need to be refined because we are impure by nature. We are hostile towards God. We are born into sin. In our lives, we need this constant refining within us. Not only has sin caused us to need this refining, but, but like I just mentioned a while ago, like sometimes we can just grow complacent in our hearts and we need our loving God to lovingly refine us so that complacency does not rule our heart. Now, if you, if you know, like the process of refining, it ain't pretty, you know, like I ain't talking about like you go panning for gold, like up in, in hell and when them little pop-up shops, like I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about like some legit panning for gold. Like when you like, like you don't really recognize that it's gold because it's ugly. 
I mean, it's, it's dark and it's dirty, but what the refiner has to do is he has to put that thing in like an extreme heat just to get out the purity that's within this rock. They see the value that's within this rock. And that's exactly the image that we have of this loving father. Like he, he sees like how depraved and how awful, you know, like we are. But when Christ steps in, like he sees then the worth, the righteousness within us. And he's trying to dig out that righteousness within us. He's trying to get that humility within us. He's trying to get that and dig into our hearts so that we can be made more into his image. So God allows this. Like, and this presents like a, 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 a conundrum. So if I'm reading this, I'm like, so God allows this pain? Yeah, he does. He allows, he allowed 2020 to happen. And he may allow more of that to happen in 2021. But let me encourage you, my friends, that's okay. Because God is refining you. He's refining his church. And he refines us, his church, you and I, so that we don't become like, you know, like 20 year old spooled child that like nobody wants to be around. Oh, come on. Like some of y'all probably looking at that, that child right now. Like, mm -hmm, I'm talking about my child right there. Like he refines us so we don't become those spoiled, puffed up children. And then like, I like this, this next part. If you miss this, you miss like something huge right here. Look at the position of the refiner. I love this. Because what does this tell us? It's, the word says that, and he sits. The position of the refiner gives us this confidence that we have that while we are being purified, while we are being refined, where is God at? He's, he's right there. He's sitting. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just be straight with you. The, the image that I had when I'm reading this is like, you know, like changing your toddler. You know, God help us, y'all. That I need some prayer with the, um, the whole potty training thing. Um, like they would just rather sit in their filth than to be changed. Now, maybe you've got like a perfect toddler. I ain't hating, but, you know, praying God's judgment a little bit on you, praying that he refines you, you know what I'm saying, give you another toddler that ain't so happy about being changed. And like this image of like this child, like, I don't want to be changed. I don't want to be changed. Like that's the image that I get here because I don't want to be refined. But look at the position of our loving father. He's not there going, oh, okay, fine. I, I, I'll just leave you alone. No, the, the father sits with us. The father is there with you while you're being refined. You feel like you're going through some garbage. You feel like you've been going through some trauma in 2020. You feel like you're stepping right on into 2021 with some trauma. Maybe you're stepping into it without your spouse. Maybe you're stepping into it without your family. Maybe you're stepping into 2021 and you just got, and you just feel beat down. Can I encourage you this morning? The Father is sitting right with you. He is Emmanuel. He is God with you right now. His position is to sit with us while we are being purged, while we are being pruned. The Father is here, and He will not abandon you. I make a charismatic go crazy right there. That our loving God is with you right now. Friends, can I just beat that nail in? God is with you. And you may feel like that nobody else is with you. You may feel like you're all alone in this process. And what did Jesus, like, like he said, I'm, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, like the helper, the comforter. He's with you now. And if we could just grasp that, man, that would just, that would do something so incredible. Now, here's the other question. It's so like, so they're being refined. The Father is with them. But why? Why this process? You won't find a single person in the Old Testament or New Testament where God would lovingly prune them. God would lovingly refine them. But for what reason? 
I, what the New Testament would tell us is that he is making us more into his image. That's what our suffering does. That's what the refinement process does is because God sees something inside of you. He sees the righteousness that he has imputed upon you through his son, Jesus Christ, via the cross. And he sees that and he's digging inside of you and he's trying to get more of that righteousness out. He's trying to get more of that image of him so that you can look more like us. And then, so why are they being refined? And then, so he says later on in this passage, he says, so that they'll present offerings to the Lord. Now, it's not just about some financial offering. Don't worry, I'm not about to get into the whole tithe thing uh, because that would be weird. I'd feel like a televangelist. Uh, but anyway, although it does have a lot to do with that, but the offering presented to God, you have to ask the question, what's God after? What is God after? Is he after your works? Is he after you being a better person? Is he after you making resolutions so that you can become a better person in 2021? No. He's after your heart. That's, that's the story of the children of Israel and God's pursuit of them. He's always after their heart. And when God begins to press inside of you, and when God begins to put you to the fire, and when God is pruning you, you have to ask yourself, why? He's doing this because he's after your heart. Maybe, just maybe, it, it could be because you've grown complacent to the Lord. Or you have an idol that you are holding on to, and God will crush the idols of your heart so that he can have all of you. Maybe you felt like it's just been a year of affliction. I mean, I find encouragement in the Psalm. Psalm 34, 19 says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from all of them. You've been in a season of refinement, church. And I would just suggest that the church as a whole has been in a season of refinement. 2020 has refined and thank God, because there's been some things and some aspects of the church that did not belong there in the first place. Within your own life, you've been refined, and maybe it's because there are some things in your life that didn't belong there anymore. And if the season of refinement continues, what, what do you do? That's the question that I'm always plagued with, you know, because people, they'll take like new years, it's like new opportunities. Like it's a new year, better me. 2021, I can't think of a rhyme, something that rhymes with 2021, um, other than 2021. Yeah, you gotta see that? Anyway, I can't really think of a rhyme, but you know, like we always take those weird things and we're like, well, 2021 is just gonna be, I'm gonna be a better person. Things are gonna go better in my life. Well, what if they don't? What if God needs to continue to refine you? What do you do? Well, I, I think we can take this passage is that we can bring our offering to the Lord. We can bring him our all, oh, God, if you need to refine me, if there's still more of me that's in there that doesn't belong, please continue to refine me. The encouraging thing is that if God is refining you, he's not done with you, church. Refuge point, the church. God's refining us. It's because he's not done with us. So what do we do? We continue to give him our all. I think practically... I'll just give you just like four things practically what you can do as you're offering to the Lord. And I'm not like, like saying like, go ahead and let's pass around the bucket. But I think you're offering to the Lord, giving him your all is like sharing your faith. Like, like there's neighbors around you. There's people in your work. There's people in your schools. They need to hear the gospel of Jesus. And if it's just you just telling him, like God loves you and he, he wants you to be saved. Like, and if it's just you telling him like, hey, Christ died for you, repent, you know? I mean, like whatever, it's just share your faith with others. I think another thing you could do is like bring them to church. Like you guys are gonna be reopening next week. Like bring people into God's church, like the family of God. God's not done with Refuge Point. Keep bringing people in. I think two other practical things you can do is serve. I mean, there are things I know that needs to be done. 
at refuge. And they'll probably be telling you about these things in the next few weeks. They need laborers. They need help. They need people to lead. You know, maybe the whole Malachi 3.10 thing, it does apply here. And maybe you should be given. Like maybe there's some things that God's after. Maybe it is your finances. Maybe you've been prioritizing everything and God's like, no, no, no. Like, why am I not at the top here? There is a biblical mandate on, on your life to give to the church. And now is not the time to be stopping. Now is not the time to be complacent. And God, may you refine us. God, may you continue to refine my heart. Refine my heart until there's nothing left but a desire to know you more. God, refine my life. Refine the church. Refine Refuge Point. Refine us here until there's nothing left but you. God, make us more into your image. And I know the reason is because those whom you love, you prune. Those whom you discipline, you love and you refine. God, refine us. And if there's still more things within us that don't belong, take them out. Destroy the idols of our hearts. May we turn away from complacency and turn to you, Lord. May you have all of us, all of our hearts. I want you to see the gospel in this, that they're waiting for this Messiah. And if you look in verse, in chapter four, you, you see the day of the Lord is coming and you flip over and you're, you're in Matthew one, but there's hundreds of years where the voice of God isn't there anymore. But then, boom, right? There's Jesus Christ, the one whom they have been waiting for. And he's there to redeem. And he's there to save and be the Messiah. I just want to encourage you, man. If you, if you don't, if you have not been saved, like, let me encourage you, man. Like, today is the day of salvation for you. <clears throat> and I've been praying that God would save you. If you have complacency in your heart, man, I just, I'm praying for you. And I pray that you would hear the warning of the Lord, that God's refining you because you've grown complacent. I want to encourage you guys this morning, um, and thank you for watching this morning. I know it's kind of a little strange because I'm straight up live in somebody's house, uh, but, you know, it's, it's the day we live in, I guess. But I want to encourage you to stay plugged in uh, to the local church, to Refuge Point. Um, they'll be meeting back again next week. Um, get connected. They're going to be starting small groups. Get connected in those. Um, serve, like, like do your part, like, like get into the grind of things and stop sitting on the sidelines, but get in and play because God is doing something so great within his church. And the reason why I know this is because he's refining his church. Before we sign off, um, let me just say, if you want to give, you can give online. Um, help us start this year out strong. Uh, you can give at refugepointchurch.org slash give, or you can give on the church app. Um, again, in person next week. Um, just want to say I love you guys. Praying for you. Uh, I miss you guys uh, deeply. Um, you guys also pray for us. Uh, we need it. We are, you know, as we are continuing to meet um, this place needs the truth of the gospel of Christ and just pray that we won't grow weary, but pray for more harvest hands to help us out, uh, and plow and plow as we see the harvest, uh, come. So I love you guys and just say happy new year to you. Um, hope you have a great week. If you need anything, you can call the church or you can just find John Ramsey and he'll help you out. All right. Love you.